We modified this old Subaru and made it three seconds faster than a Lamborghini for less than £15,000. Everything from upgrading the brakes and tyres to completely stripping the interior and turning up the boost. Because we wanted to see if two normal guys with no real mechanical experience and a small budget could really build a car that was capable of beating a supercar. We got some stuff right and we got some stuff very wrong, but here's how it went. We considered a bunch of different cars for this, an old 3 Series, a 350Z, an MX-5 or even a Civic, basically everything with rust. Instead, I stupidly let Will choose, and he brought back an Impreza wagon. But despite that being an unusual choice, Will seemed to think he was onto something. Just hear me out. They have good power from stock, there's huge aftermarket support, and most importantly, they're cheaper than other alternatives. STIs were a bit on the pricey side, and a cheap, unmodified WRX saloon isn't easy to find. However, a WRX wagon was £2,000 cheaper, but didn't have that much less performance. So we went ahead and purchased this 140,000 mile Impreza WRX wagon for £3,900. Unfortunately, the one we bought was a little rough around the edges and it had one minor issue. Well, but there was definitely potential. We knew there were some weak points with the Subaru engines, especially when modifying them. Head gasket failures, bending rods, spinning bearings, destroying gearboxes were just a few of the many things you'll read online. But instead of putting things in place to prevent a catastrophic failure, we chose to ignore those issues, cross our fingers and hope for the best. We needed to get a baseline lap in the Subaru. And so to get the thing to even move, that meant fitting an upgraded clutch and a lightweight flywheel for £874. This was the first time we worked on the car and it definitely gave us a taste of what was to come. Ow! <laughs> Gearbox. <laughs> Since then, we've learned that the easiest way to do a Subaru clutch is to just drop the whole engine. But we did it the hard way, because that's just what we do. After a day of struggling with the gearbox and fitting the clutch, we headed to the track for the first time to get a baseline lap in the Subaru. This was also the first time we'd get to see what the Subaru would be up against. We didn't think he had the contacts, but Scott rocked up to the track in a 632 horsepower Lamborghini Murcielago, and the whole challenge suddenly seemed much harder. This car costs well over 10 times more than our budget, and it showed on track. It was rapid, and it set a 116.7 around the track, a whole 10 seconds quicker than our battered old Subaru. We knew we needed to get modifying and fast. The most obvious problem we needed to address was the suspension. The stock struts were dead, and they were doing a terrible job at controlling the car's weight. It wallowed around the corners, and the rear right damper was completely useless. <laughs> So we addressed that problem with a set of BC racing coilovers for £995. You can definitely spend a lot more on coilovers, but any less and we probably would have ended up with cheap rubbish that would have snapped at the first corner. They're stiffer and gave us way more adjustment when it comes to ride height, camber and damping. Because we knew we had more suspension bits to do, we didn't get them properly set up. So with nothing but a little adjustment of the dampers, the coilovers knocked eight tenths from our lap time. They also made it feel like a race car, and that matters, right? Shiny new coilovers had exposed the next weak point, the old, worn and cheap tyres. Look at how the tyre just folded under the wheel when it's heavily loaded. We knew there was scope for a huge improvement here. We actually tested three different tyres in this video. A budget tyre, a high performance road tyre and a semi-slick track tyre. It might seem obvious that we went for the semi-slick, but it did take a bit of adjustment with the pressures to get them working as they should. We also knew that Nankang recommended negative 2 degrees of camber to get the best out of them, so there was even more time to be had when we did the proper setup. I also called Nankang out in the video. I want to work with Nankang. <laughs> and they actually responded. Oh no 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 no. The ridiculously sticky AR1 tyres cost us £600 but shaved just over two seconds off our time. Now it really felt like we were getting somewhere. After the brakes were starting to spark in the tyres episode, we probably should have upgraded them next. Instead, we went to Donington Park Circuit and went for extreme weight reduction. The Subaru went on a crash diet from 1,431 kilograms to 1,295 kilograms in just a few hours. Everything we could unbolt got removed, even the rear wiper arm. When we got the car set up later on in the series, we found out the car actually weighed 1,264 kilos. This was probably the episode Callum had the most fun with, because he got to get the power tools out. I did it. Some of you wondered why we didn't put a bucket seat in, but we worked out that by the time we'd fitted a seat, a harness bar and a set of harnesses, it wouldn't save that much weight. So we binned it. And remember, our goal is to beat a supercar, and that felt even more possible when Scott went out and humiliated a GT3 RS on track. My lightweight Subaru's coming through! 
<laughs> this was probably the only episode we made a profit on, and likely one that would make the biggest dent in our lap time. We did say at the beginning of the series that it needed to stay practical, but we think removing all the seats only makes it more practical. And vans are practical. Finally, it was time to upgrade our brakes. We considered buying a big brake kit, but we were only going for a few laps at a time, so it wasn't worth spending huge money. Instead, we bought some standard sized groove discs, a set of track pads and changed the fluid. After lots of great suggestions in the comments, we fitted a set of white line anti-roll bars and a roll center correction kit. We hoped this would solve our understeer issue and it meant that we could finally do a proper setup to get the most out of the tires. These were some of the easiest mods we did to the Subaru and they set us back £1,166. We took the car to Kerbera and the weather was miserable, so we couldn't get a time worth noting, but we did realise that we'd set our anti-roll bars a bit too stiff. It was now oversteering way more than before and even wagging its inside rear wheel through the corners. Despite not getting a time, we were confident that these upgrades were gonna make an impact. We now had one eye on the thing everyone had been asking for, more power. So while we waited for those parts to arrive, we decided to make the Subaru look like it could be a supercar. Only instead of having someone do this properly, we had a go. We pitched to Scott that we could wrap the Subaru ourselves and if we did it in less than 24 hours, then we could keep it off the budget. As an added bonus, Scott said he would get us an extra gift if we actually managed to get it done. After a long day and a very, very long night, we really did get it done in less than 24 hours. It was easily the most taxing thing we've ever done on this car, and it's not something I ever want to do again. Scott's gift was a brand new set of wheels that worked perfectly against our bright yellow wrap. Fortunately, when amateurs wrap a car in a very short space of time with little to no patience, there are bound to be some issues with quality. Our wrap hasn't fared too well and is already starting to peel and lift. Would I recommend DIY wrapping? Yes, but only if you've got the time and the patience to do it properly. Also, make sure you post heat the wrap. That's likely why ours is peeling so bad. We had upgraded pretty much everything we could without touching the engine. So finally, it was time to give in to all the comments begging us to put more power in. The first thing we did was put the car on the dyno completely stock to get a baseline figure. When it was new, it should have made 221 horsepower, but our tired 140,000 mile engine only made 196. It wasn't great, but we knew we had huge gains to make. We weren't sure if we'd need to upgrade the turbo to get the car nearer the 400 horsepower mark. Everyone we spoke to said there was a huge risk that we'd send all four pistons flying out of the block and leave the gearbox with five neutrals. We looked into forging the engine so we could slap on a bigger turbo, but then we wouldn't have enough budget left or if the gearbox went bang. In the end, we decided to see how far we could push our tiny standard turbo. We were trying to get as much power as possible for as little money. We bought a cheap three inch exhaust, a high flow fuel pump, some bigger injectors, a boost solenoid and an air filter. After some difficulty fitting the injectors, and then a lot of difficulty and an injury fitting the exhaust, oh. Oh. we did get it done. The exhaust was an absolute nightmare. Richard had to cut and weld all of the hangers just to make it fit, which he wasn't too pleased about. Unfortunately, all of our frustration for the last two days came to an even more frustrating end. We started it up and realised oil was leaking from underneath and the exhaust had a huge leak. It had definitely messed something up. We quickly realised that we hadn't connected the oil return pipe from the turbo correctly and the exhaust was just a dreadful fit. It was late in the day, so we left Richard alone with the car to sort it out. We had no doubts, so of course Richard came through and cleaned up our mistakes. We headed to Surrey Rolling Road so we could finally get the car remapped and make some gains. Just needed to keep everything crossed so that our tired old Subaru wouldn't nuke itself on the dyno. The car made 196 horsepower in stock form, but after the Subaru specialist Duncan worked his magic, that was bumped up to 304 brake horsepower. As you can tell, Will and I were over the moon with that result. All in, this episode was our most expensive, setting us back £1,530, but it was so worth it. And finally, this was it. Our budget was 15 grand, and we had spent just £9,065, including the car. We didn't know if we should have maxed the budget to add more power, but we were quietly confident that the Subaru could do it. We hadn't done a proper lap time since we fitted the new brakes, set up the suspension and added over 100 more horsepower. Last time we were out, we were still just under six seconds off the Lamborghini's time. Unfortunately, the British winter meant it was constantly damp and we really didn't want to keep everyone waiting until summer. So to make sure it's a fair fight, we got the Murcielago back to set a time in identical conditions. It hadn't rained, but the track was greasy. However, we were concerned that this lent into Scott's hands. The Lambo had proper road tyres on that would likely work much better in the cooler temps than the AR ones we had on our Subaru. We were nervous, 
Six months of building had brought us to this point. If it didn't win, we knew we'd need to spend a bunch more money just to make up the difference. After one drive in the car with more power, Callum and I were convinced we were onto a winner, but we were still going up against a six and a half litre V12 Lamborghini. After Will had stopped getting excited over the Murcielago, doors go up and it looks pointy. <laughs> Scott went out to set a rapid time of 124.13. There was nothing left on the table and Scott reckoned there wasn't much more he could do to make it go quicker. Then it was time for the Subaru. Could it actually do it? After just one lap, we could tell that Scott was shocked at how good it was. And we could also tell that he was really enjoying it. Oh my God! <laughs> The Subaru looked like it was absolutely flying and it was almost unrecognizable compared to how it looked when it was standard. We were confident it was gonna make us proud. Not that we were worried, of course it beat the Murcielago. It decimated the Lambo with a 121.36, almost three seconds quicker. As you can imagine, we were unbelievably happy. This is what we did! <laughs> We're on holiday, good night. <laughs> yes, there were many things we might have done differently over the course of the series, and we learnt a hell of a lot. But in the end, we managed to beat the Lamborghini with less than £10,000. And so if you have the desire to get stuck in with some basic tools and the patience, you can too. Just don't pick something with a boxer engine. Check out the entire series here. Also, here's the full uncut lap Scott did in the Subaru. Thanks for watching, and subscribe to be sure you don't miss Series 2.